Thank you for the introduction. My name is Kamila. I am a PhD student, and together with my supervisor, Jan Klosak, we are interested in rapid lifetime predictions of matches. Uh, we are focused on high cycle and giga cycle fatigue, and first I would like to tell you something about giga cycle fatigue. Uh, in various, various material do not exhibit convention endurance fatigue limit, and uh, experimental data shows that fatigue failure can occur at 10 to the power of 9 cycles and beyond. This era is called very high cycle fatigue or giga cycle fatigue. Among these materials in which this gigacycle phenomenon can be observed are high cycle, high strand steels, titanium alloys, or aluminium alloys. Uh, gigacycle fatigue has its specifics. Uh, during gigacycle fatigue, internal fatigue failure can be observed, and crack usually initiates at some voids or inclusions, and it is because small details are crucial during crack initiation. Uh, in the first picture, you can see a comparison of uh, low cycle fatigue, high cycle fatigue, and very high cycle fatigue in terms of crack initiation. At low cycle fatigue, crack, uh, there is multiple crack initiation on surface, and at high cycle fatigue, uh, the crack initiates at one point uh, on surface. And during very high cycle fatigue, as I said, uh, there is uh, internal crack initiation and uh, fish eye is formed. Uh, in our research, uh, we use average opening stress for fatigue lifetime prediction, and the results uh, depend on averaging distance, which follows from experimental fatigue data and stress distributions. Uh, accelerated fatigue tests are realized using ultrasonic testing uh, machine, which works at frequency of 20 kilohertz. And uh, this machine can reach 1 billion cycles in for 14 hours. And the stress distribution we obtained from uh, final element methods. Uh, because an ultrason ultrasonic fatigue machine works at frequency of 20 kilohertz, uh, these specimens need to be designed for this frequency, and uh, their intris intrinsic frequency of longitudinal oscillation need to be close uh, to 20 kilohertz. We designed set of specimens, we designed smooth and notch specimens, and the notch specimens had uh, notch radii of 0.2, 1, 0 0.2, 0 0.8, and 3 millimeters. You can see the parameters in the picture. Uh, in this picture, you can see approximations of uh, fatigue data. Uh, you can see that uh, the smaller notch radio is the shorter fatigue lifetime uh, the specimen has. And in this picture, you can see axial stress distribution of various notches, uh, of notches which we tested. And the uh, maximum of stress is uh, at, at the notch tip, is the zero value. Uh, this slide describes uh, the process of uh, fatigue lifetime predictions uh, from uh, two SM curves of smooth and notch specimen with the uh, specific notch radius uh, and the corresponding axial stress distribution, we can obtain averaging distance. And this distance can be applied for uh, different uh, stress axial distributions. And we can obtain uh, fatigue lifetime predictions of various notches. Uh, in this slide, I will try to explain how to determine uh, averaging distance. Uh, as I said, we need uh, two curves. The first is smooth, and the second is notch curve. Uh, then we need axial stress distribution of the corresponding notch specimen. And the uh, whole process comes from the first equation, from the, the e equality of stress ratios, uh, on the left side, there are fracture stress stresses from 
S n curves at the same time, uh, at the same number of cycles to fracture. Uh, this is fracture stresses of notch specimen and fracture stress of smooth specimens. And on the right side, there are uh, average stresses from actual distributions. Uh, the upper stress is uh, average stress of over the whole cross section in the narrowest uh, diameter of specimen. And the uh, lower stress is average stress over the averaging distance. Uh, this uh, lower stress is obtained from this equation because all other stresses are known. And when we know this stress, we can easily uh, find the averaging distance L from uh, this equation. Uh, we uh, repeat this process for all uh, number of cycles to fracture and we obtain the dependence of uh, averaging distances on number of cycles to fracture. Uh, in this picture you can see averaging distances for all specimens uh, which we tested. So for uh, notch radius 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and so on. Uh, you can see that uh, averaging distances of uh, specimens with notch radius of uh, 0 0.1 are quite similar to averaging distance of specimens with uh, notch radius of 0 0.2. And um, in the case of uh, specimens with notch radius of uh, 0 0.8 and 3 millimeters, there are uh, zero values and uh, in this case we couldn't find the average stress in the axial stress distribution. Uh, this averaging distances can be used for fatigue lifetime predictions. It is an inverse process and I reused uh, uh, the averaging distance of specimens with notch radius of 0 0.2 and in the picture 11 you can see the fatigue lifetime predictions of different uh, notches and in this picture you can see a comparison of uh, fatigue lifetime predictions and experiments uh, solid lines are predictions and dashed line are experiments. Uh, you can see that uh, the prediction of uh, specimens with notch radius of 0 0.1 are quite similar to the experiment and it is because the averaging distance of uh, the specimens with notch radius of 0 0.1 uh, was uh, similar, quite similar to averaging distance which we used for fatigue lifetime predictions. And in the case of specimens with notch radius of 0 0.8 and 3 millimeters, uh, the predictions are on danger side and it's strange. And at the same time, we can see that the, the averaging uh, distance of uh, these notches is uh, smaller than the averaging distance which we used for fatigue lifetime predictions. Uh, so we decided to observe uh, surfaces of notches and we found out that uh, these bigger notches were made in different way than the smaller ones. Uh, with these uh, bigger notches were made with knife with small radius and this knife caused uh, uh, small steps on surface of notch and these small stress concentrators, concentrators were decisive uh, during gigacycle fatigue and led to a steeper slope of curve than we expected. Uh, during determination of averaging distances, so I couldn't we couldn't find uh, the average stress in the axial stress distribution. Now I am talking about the zero values. And this was caused because we expected a perfect notch without these small concentrators. And uh, these small concentrators uh, caused the increase in stress in the extra stress distribution. Uh, 
in this uh, picture, you can see fracture surfaces. Uh, in the left uh, picture, there is a fracture surface of uh, smooth specimens, smooth specimen, and there is internal crack initiation. And in the picture 19, uh, it is the fracture surface of uh, a specimen with the notch, and there was a crack initiation on surface. Uh, in conclusion, I would like to summarize a few points. Uh, we proved that averaging distance depends on number of cycles to fracture and that the averaging distance is uh, decreasing with increasing number of cycles to fra failure. And uh, this averaging distance can be used for fatigue lifetime predictions of notch specimens. And uh, the averaging distance depends on the side of the on the size of the notch and the method of the production. And if we use a greater value uh, of the averaging distance, we will get uh, lifetime predictions on danger side. Thank you for your attention.